Matt's normally doesn't, he doesn't take questions uh, during the Q&A. So years ago, we're, or at the keynote, years ago, we're like, hey, people always have lots of questions from Matt's. And anything that someone asked him in the hallway is probably something that other people would be interested in hearing. Um, and so, we've, so we, we always organize this time at the end of RubyConf to ask Matt questions. I have questions that I have sort of seeded from my own interests that we can get, get started. Uh, but I expect you to run this for the most part. I will help moderate it. So there's a microphone over there and there's a microphone over there. I would ask you to, to line up and I will call on you uh, as you get up there. And uh, with that, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. So how's RubyConf been for you this year? Yeah, this is... This is a great conference. Uh, the, I met so many first timers. So, and then at the, at the same time, I met very old faces like a Chad, Rich, a Paul, um, many, many other guys. So the, um, it's, at that part, it's, it's kind of like a reun reunion. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, you know, with as many new people as, but we yeah, still yeah. have that old sort of the, that old base still going. How many, I, I was just, I was curious earlier, how many Ruby conferences or I guess conferences in general do you go to a year? Uh, yeah, the outside of Japan, I attended five conferences this year. Okay. Yeah. Is that a lot? Is that an average? Yeah, an average. Okay. Yeah, mostly for five conferences a year. Were they all Ruby conferences? Do you go to other kind of conferences as well? No, no, only Ruby conferences. Oh, no. No questions yet? You guys are, you got nothing, nothing going on? Oh, look, we, we're okay. See, I just had to poke and prod. There's always like once, the, once it gets going. Um, let's see. Um, you, there was a lot of talk about, we're still hearing lots of talk about type checking and all that kinds of stuff mm -hmm. in Ruby. Um, have you thought any more about, you know, is it a, a, a real serious thing that you think Ruby will get um, in the next, unknown amount of time, <laughs> or is it still a, sort of a wait and see on a, a lot of those more experimental ideas? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's still experimental idea, but uh, uh, the people like uh, Soto who, who gave uh, the type checking uh, session in this conference uh, is working on the, some kind of the relatively uh, useful type checking tools. And then uh, the people from, I don't remember the name, I'm sorry, uh, the, a guy from JetPlane mm -hmm. uh, is working on the, some kind of the, uh, generating runtime uh, type type information from the test execution. Mm. So cool. that the, yeah, the generating the prototype or return type information from the the actual runtime ex uh, type type information. Mm -hmm. So that combining these those technologies, so we can have the uh, you know something closer to the uh, the TypeScript, uh, the TSI files. Mm -hmm. So that would be uh, in, that would be gradually introduce us to that. Yes. So yeah, partially, just yeah, statically typed. Yeah. So thinking about them as sort of like these tools that we have on the side mm -hmm. that we use to validate our code base. Like, oh, it is doing what it's supposed to do, but maybe we don't bother to do all that type checking mm -hmm. once we get into production. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that just, that slows things down. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Cool. Um, okay, we're gonna start over here. Yep. Yes, um, about how much time do you spend coding versus project management and uh, uh, conferences and things like that? And do you feel like it's a, a good combo or do you kind of uh, miss being a, a little less uh, responsible for all the things with, that go along with Ruby? Uh, the ratio is, I try to be a half programmer, half designer, but the uh, actual ratio is, uh, I don't know, 20% programmer? 20% uh, designer, uh, the 60% uh, something else. <laughs> 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 like uh, reading, writing mails, or the checking blogs, reading, writing Twitters, or something like that. So the 60% wasting time. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, yeah, I, I should have been more productive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I know the feeling. Um, uh, I think another a, a good follow-up question is also again because we have lots of new people is you know I maybe give a, a an idea of what the the what the core team looks like right now I know that you know for a lot of the new people who mm -hmm. see like 
lots of people doing lots of different things. You know, I know that like back in like one eight days, that wasn't true, right? So like, uh, you know, who's who do you who's on the core team now that is doing that you feel like is doing a lot of the the work these days? Uh, we we have uh, we we don't have the rigid uh, membership of the core team, mm -hmm. unlike like other other sure. forms of software, but uh, uh, we gave some uh, contributors a uh, commit commit privilege, mm -hmm. like uh, we call them committers, sure. so that we have nearly 100 committers mm -hmm. for V, the core V. Right. So that these are core team, but uh, uh, most, of, most of them have some kind of the, you know, the role in the community, like uh, the, the maintaining the documentation, uh, improving the reference, reference documentation, or maybe uh, in charge of some uh, libraries or something. So the, we have the very active, uh, the commuters who is working on the core, like a language self or the implementation of the virtual machine, we have less than 20 uh, commuters. Mm -hmm. like a, so that each month, uh, once a month, we have the, some kind of the Ruby developers meeting in Tokyo, and then we have, I don't know, 10 or something people attend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll go over here. Um, hi, Mats. It, it appears that you've become a podium and you're looking well. Um, but uh, so on the, the design side, uh, what other language designers uh, do you find interesting right now and what's interesting about the work that they're doing? Uh, the other language, yep, of, uh, Elixir and uh, some other language like a TypeScript is pretty interesting. Uh, the TypeScript uh, for having, you know, the static type checking to the dynamic language, like di dynamic language JavaScript. And then the Elixir is for the uh, distributed and the concurrent programming, which is I'm weak at. <laughs> Should I ask a question about concurrent pro concurrency and actors again? Uh, yeah. Uh, I can. <laughs> I don't have to. Yeah. Uh, the, I didn't tell this year, but uh, we have the three major, you know, challenge to the Ruby three. One is performance. I talked about that. So the MJIT is solving that. Is is kind of solution to that that performance uh, challenge. The second one is concurrency. Then, so the this, you know, the 25 years ago when I started Ruby, the only we had only one CPU per computer. So that. The concurrency is the, you know, some kind of the, you know, context switching things. It's not for performance. So that, you know, the threading is okay just because, you know, it's time sliced. Mm -hmm. But uh, these days, so the threading is run in parallel so that we have more performance. At the, at the same time, we have more problem just because, you know, we have more rest conditions because of it's not time sliced. So that uh, in those days, we need uh, more serious consideration of the, the threads aware programming or concurrent programming. Then uh, the th in my opinion, the thread is not really an uh, ideal uh, model of concurrent programming. Just because you know the we I mean, by thread shares everything, so that we can see uh, any anything from the thread, so that everything is shared. And uh, in Ruby, so many things is uh, you know mutable, so you can change the, the shared state very very easily. That would, that could cause deadlocks, rest conditions, and then so many problems. So that so we need more. Uh, you know, the modern uh, model for concurrency. So that uh, the Koichi, the VM guy, is working on the something named Guild, which is the, uh, the isolated execution body on top of, uh, the over the threads. So that uh, you can fork off the new Guild so that those guilds are separated object-wise. So that only, 
uh, you can communicate to the, the other guild by only through the channel. And then uh, the channel, the, and then you can send object toward the different uh, different guild, but uh, only uh, immutable object can be uh, passed to the, the other guild. So in, in uh, how's, it's... How's Koichi going with that? <laughs> yeah, Koichi is working on that, but uh, I'm not sure the, the up-to-date state. Mm, okay. Uh, and uh, you, maybe uh, you can, uh, you can consider it's kind of like a web, web thread, a web, web yeah. workers right. of, the, of the JavaScript. Okay, cool. Let's go back over here. Yeah. So I was wondering, if you had just total access to break everyone's code, what is the <laughs> one thing in Ruby you really wish that you could change? And then on the opposite side, what's the one thing in Ruby that you're most happy about and most proud of? Uh, the us, I answered the, the last one first. And then I, I'm proud of the inventing the block, the idea of block, which is, uh, I'm very, very proud of. And then, yeah, <laughs> I regret many things. <laughs> but uh, the, one of the biggest one is adding thread. Yeah, I, I thought concurrency model is pretty interesting and ha harmless at the moment, but, but it wasn't. <laughs> the concurrency model. And uh, the, at the beginning, I stole so many ideas from the existing language like Perl, and then I, yeah, I did that probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> for that, for example, we have the tons of dollar something vari weird variables, so that, that I, I think that they, are, they were too much things. What did, um, what version did threads get added in? Yeah, very beginning. Like, yeah. Oh, like 1.2 had threads? 1.2 1. 1. had threads. Okay. Yeah, of course. I think the first open source version was 0 0.95, and it has threads already. Okay. Yes. Hello. Um, so what is your motivation on which features to ship for the next Ruby version? Like, what makes you decide that, oh, this is um, what I want to add into the next feature or next version of Ruby. The, the motivation for the next version. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the... Is it still just that Christmas is coming? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we heard about event-driven event de de development event earlier, driven yeah. Driven development. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course the time frame is the, one of the motivation. And, uh, you know, the, I, I kind of think that like Ruby is one of my child, children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, you know, as a parent, it's very natural to nurse their, uh, their uh, kids. So, <laughs> you know, the, I'm, I nurse, nurse them, uh, nurse them for the last 25 years, <laughs> why, can I, why, why can I stop that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, have you, there's been a lot of talk about death. I don't know if anyone caught that. <laughs> um, have, you, have you given any thought to, it's been 25 years, mm -hmm. do you, do you wanna do this for, for forever? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy enough. Yes. <laughs> so you, you said one of the languages that you were looking at is Elixir mm -hmm. for inspiration. Uh, what version of Ruby are we going to introduce macros? <laughs> uh, Aaron has asked this question at every RubyConf for five you. years or so. <laughs> Yeah, I have two fold answers. The first answer is never, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> uh, the second answer is that, you know, the, we have uh, the library like Reaper, and uh, so that we can generate the 
abstract syntax tree from Ruby or some other language. So that we, if we put the, you know, the, the code generating library from the ASD so that we can separate uh, the, 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 you know, the ASD and the parser and the code generator so that you can create the ASD from your favorite language or something, then the code generate to uh, use Ruby as the backend. So that in that sense, you can uh, use your version of Ruby or maybe you can add the macro to the, to the language. That is my big idea, but uh, I don't know. Maybe you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, people have talked a lot in the last couple of years about static types and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. What do you think about interfaces? Like being able to say this method must take an object which can respond to these methods and more like an interface like they have in Swift. Uh, the actually, even, even when we are going to add some kind of the static type checking, the, the static type checking as static type checking will, will behave like uh, structure types, not the uh, nominal types. In that sense, the, our static type check will be the interface of other languages like Go and Swift. So that we are not going to have the nominal check, like uh, this method takes string. That means that, that this method takes uh, string-like object. Hi, Mats. Um, it's very heartening to me that we see many Japanese Rubyists here at RubyConf, so thank you for all of you who came here this long way. Um, a lot of times I see Japanese Rubyists separate from the other Rubyists, and I feel like I wish there were some way um, that we could get together and interact more. And I know learn Japanese is probably the first thing that would come to mind, <laughs> um, and there's something to that. But is there anything that you'd like to tell us that would help us better understand the Japanese Ruby community and better, you know, relate with them? Do, uh, let, me, let me ask a different question first. Do you want to be the ambassador for the Japanese Ruby community, or would you rather someone else take up that? Yeah, I'm not a very good person to be. Maybe a, Nobu? He Nobu? loves to talk, that guy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Right. Yeah, nobody knows Nabu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, the, you know, the, for example, the Akira had been a good, good uh, ambassador for the last few years, so that maybe we can do more, or like a, you know, having the Ruby Kaigi session uh, at the track in, in this conference is quite, quite nice. And then I saw some kind of the, you know, West meets East, but, uh, their communication in, sure. uh, right after the, set, uh, the presentations. So the, that would be uh, pretty impressive for me. So then, and then, I don't know, the, the, you know, the mindset or spirit of Ruby programmers, the Ruby community members, are the, yeah, quite the same all over the world, like even in Japan. Then, uh, you know, the point is we have yeah, that we tend to be weak at the speaking English in, the, the, in Japanese people, so that it's kind of that we have the language barrier between us. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, you know. But we all speak Ruby, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that a few years ago, the Shugo uh, was gave a presentation, and then after the, his, uh, the, talk, the QA was in, in, in Ruby. So, <laughs> so the, 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 quest, the person stand up and say the question in English, and he didn't understand. So the, uh, the, the one came into the type into the Ruby code. <laughs> then he said, oh. <laughs> yeah, we, we have Ruby in common, yeah. Do you, do you still consider yourself a C, a C programmer? Yeah. Who, who writes, who happens to write Ruby? Uh, n not happens to Ruby. Oh, okay, to write okay. Ruby, But I'm, I'm a C programmer. Okay. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, you know, 
So I love to create and uh, improve Ruby. And then, uh, you know, actually, I'm not a mere C programmer just because you know, most of my C code is rely on the Ruby runtime, sure. garbage collectors, mm -hmm. and some the object system. So that I don't know, I'm a Ruby C programmer. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's a uh, well, you, I at least I was not privy to them. Um, many talks about M Ruby this year. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give a little update about what's going on with M Ruby as well? Well, uh, M Ruby, yeah. Last year, the Shopify uh, decided to use uh, MRuby in their site to execute MRuby in their sandbox, so that MRuby is going to uh, run untrusted code, so that they made uh, some kind of bounty program mm -hmm. for MRuby, and then they sub the, the, the hackers mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the bounty so submitted so many re bug reports to the MRuby. The, until until last summer, I uh, I fixed the literally hundreds of bugs <laughs> of MRuby. So that for their effort and my effort, <laughs> and uh, the MRuby became so stable. Great. So that yeah, it's. Do you see it more as a stable, just sort of project that does what it needs to do? Do you have mm -hmm. any things that you want to add to it, or do you consider it a really good? Yeah, is it a good but place? Uh, we. Are, we are planning the the changing the the virtual machine uh, structure and then, uh, the you know our you know the binary format to reduce the memory consumption because on the on some uh, embedded systems has the so little memory like a, you know 100k or something mm -hmm. so that it's the MRB is still too big for those uh, small computers so that we are going to we are going to try to reduce uh, the memory so that we can use uh, Ruby for you know the more more broader domains. Cool. Um, let's go back over here. Thank you. Hi, Matt. Um, yeah. I'm wondering how does the core team onboard new members and uh, what it takes to become a core team member? Uh, <laughs> how do you get commitment? You know the. How to become committed is quite, uh, if you submit the bug report with fix, or maybe you, you fix the existing bugs for, say, three, four times. So that <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will uh, give you a commit, commit privilege. Uh, or maybe you can ask me, OK, I, I think I proved that I'm a, you know, I'm an excellent contributor or something. So that I will give you a commit, commit privilege. So you, you can be a committer that easy. And then uh, the very, you know, after that, you know, uh, we, you know we, don't, we don't have strict membership. So that, uh, so that relationship with uh, uh, the other committers or maybe myself would uh, make you the very core committer. <laughs> Um, I'll ask a, a quick follow-up question there. Um, it comes up all. It comes up on a continual basis. Is there any more thoughts, of, like thoughts of if the if the 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 main, the main trunk of Ruby is going to stick with Subversion, or is there much can, like talk about moving to Git? Or uh, I mean, I. I I personally am not crazy invested in this decision mm -hmm. um, because I mostly just want the contributors to have the tools that work mm -hmm. for them. But I know that people people ask that yeah, uh, yeah, occasionally. Yeah. So. Phrase, yeah. so that yeah, our central repository is still subversion, which is kind of ancient things. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's not CVS. We got past that one, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the ancient, but uh, <laughs> the old one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, most of the the biggest reason is the we have tons of uh, scripts. Uh, built on top of the subversion hooks, so that uh, so we rely on those those small spreads. Mm -hmm. uh, that we have to rewrite many things to move on to the Git. So I yeah, of course I we prefer the Git. So that I think most of our, most of our core co co committers use Git 
in their hand, their side. So they, they use the uh, Git, uh, Git SVN to download everything. So that then, you know, they, ma they version manage uh, in their, their side, mm -hmm. then push, uh, the, push the patches into the, into the subversion repository using S Git SVN in reverse side. Mm -hmm. So that in that way, so we don't lose little things. So that we have less pressure about using Git. Yeah. yeah. And the, beside that, we have the, you know, the, the mirror of, of the Ruby repository in GitHub so that the, the, if you want to, to check out the, the Git repository so that you can access to the, the GitHub Ruby slash Ruby so that there's no problem. And then you can even submit to the pull request so that we can uh, pull mouse pull request from the, the GitHub. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, yep. Hi. Uh, not that, uh, excuse me, not that we don't use the, you know, the, the GitHub issue tracker for uh, the integration of the, our mail, to the, our mailing list. Right, yep. <laughs> yes. Hi. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Uh, I was wondering, uh, earlier this week you were talking about Renaswan. Ruby is nice, and so we are nice. Yeah, yeah. And I was wondering if you have any advice or in, any requests to us as individuals of how we can either change or continue to do any particular things to reflect that niceness of Ruby. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm a mere human, so that I'm not really a nice person every day, but, uh, but uh, I pretend. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Yeah, we all do. So that, yeah. So I ask you, as a, you, as a community member of the, the broader Ruby community, so pretend. <laughs> a little bit farther. Uh, fake it till you make it, yeah. as it were. Okay. And then you will become the artist. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. um, when, when we moved from 1.8 to 2.0, we had a long release candidate series with 1.9. Mm -hmm. And we had a long phase where gems would run under one Ruby and not the other. We had, like, in your keynote, you mentioned there was breaking change and there was problems and pain with that. When you, when we get close to releasing Ruby three, will there be a similar like two point nine uh, release candidate, or have you, uh, would you change anything with the way you released the one to two change? Uh, pro might be, so that I. Didn't have any concrete idea yet, but a recent input from others so that make me uh, the idea of that we having 2.9 right before the 3.0. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, that would be nice. That might be a nice idea. Awesome. I think you've you've said in the past that you felt you felt that the transition within. 1.8 to 1.9 was, you know, there were, it was rocky at times and stuff like that, but that you felt like you wanted, as you went forward, you always wanted it to be a gradual change. Mm -hmm. And I think we've definitely seen that within the 2.0 series, yeah. you know, just a, if you just take method arguments, it's just an easy example. Mm -hmm. We've seen, you know, in the new version, you know, like, I can't remember which versions add which anymore, which is fine. That's <laughs> sort of the point in yeah. a way, right? Um, you know, adding optionals and adding keywords and kind of moving forward mm -hmm. instead of it being like, okay, like all of the stuff just appears at some future version and there's tons of changes. It's been this sort of gradual movement forward. Um, I think that's been very successful. I, I presume that's what you want to kind of yeah, continue yeah. to do. So that, uh, you know, the group one, one and three and the two all has the, uh, the feature wise was a big step, but uh, it's it's still kept uh, compatibility so between the 193 and the 2.0, so that that kind of things is be pretty nice. So that uh, are we going to do s similar things? So the adding uh, Ruby three will comes with the uh, new features, but uh, it it was it should be 
me addition that the it should break uh, it shouldn't have the huge breaking change, especially without reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course, we are going to add some kind of the breaking change in some somewhere. Uh, the yeah, several several and uh, small uh, breaking changes, but uh, you know we we can't help it. But uh, we are trying to make the you know, the damage as as small as possible. Do you know what those breaking changes are, or are you just saying like I will do something that you guys won't like? Yeah. <laughs> the and I right now I'm thinking of the keyword arguments. Okay. And then and the, the frozen string literal. Oh, okay. What do you do? You want to change keyword arguments to not always make a hash, or what was what was oh, your? not the other way. So the keyword arguments will not create the hash. At you, the, right. At yeah, the that's bottom. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. So they would work. A little bit more like, say, Python's keyword arguments work. That yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they do a, a, a binding without yes, it. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, of, of course, the Python every argument of the Python c could be work as a the keyword arguments. Right. In Ruby, it's the keyword arguments that the mandatory diff arguments are different. Right. But with, uh, the with the colon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, otherwise, in other way, but it's it will be the real keyword arguments in the okay. future. I think I had just have. There's no other questions here. I have just one last question that came to mind, which is, you know, when you're back home and you, um, you know, you're not going to conferences, you're getting some work done, presumably. You know, you're you're home with your with your family. Um, I guess it's two 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 questions. Um, do you go to meetups in Matsue? Like, do you go to Ruby meetups? And two, having I I was had the privilege of going to Matsue at one point and knowing that they. They love the the fact that Matsui is sort of the Ruby City in a mm -hmm. way. Do do people see you on the street like just random people and be like, "Hey, it's Mats"? <laughs> uh, two so the two okay. questions. Okay, first question. Yeah. I seldom attend to the uh, the Ruby meetup in Matsue. Okay. And, uh, I'm not really a social guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that we're up here in front of all these people then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if <laughs> the, 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 the point is, I really love to talk with other guys for, to get inspiration. Sure. Yeah. But at the, at the same time, I'm not social. Okay. So that, that's a, some kind of contradiction. Okay. okay. The second question. Okay. I have been uh, recognizing the street for very rare. Okay. Yeah. Only four times in the in my life. Okay. The twice in Imatsue. Okay. And in the one in the books bookstore. Okay. The one in it, the were you in the computer section yeah. of the bookstore too? <laughs> oh, come on. That's a gimme. Yeah. <laughs> Are you mad? Yeah. <laughs> so then he said, how can I learn programming? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you just give him a hand him a Ruby book? Here you go. I'll just walk off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I'm, just because now, I'm a self-taught programmer, so that I didn't learn, you know, sure. from others. So that I didn't learn from uh, the classes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't learn from the any you know tutorials or the classes or something. Right. So that okay, just go before the computer. Just type in. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not. I I really am a good, a bad, a bad teacher. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the the, the once then the, the the other the other occasion is the uh the the guy recognized me in in front of the city hall. <laughs> okay. Oh, are yeah, you mad? Yeah. Then the other one uh, is in in which city? I don't remember. In Fukuoka. Okay. Yeah. Then on the bookstore again, <laughs> in front of the computer corner. <laughs> the first one, the last one, is in New York. Oh. Yeah, I visited New York for the business trip. So then I w walk in the street with uh, uh, walk in the street with other guys. Then the the guy stopping the 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 you know the signal. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the the call, called me. Are you mad? We are just com coming back from the Ruby meetup in New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 
It was surprising. Yeah. You know? Interesting life. Um, if, well, if there's no more questions, going once, going twice. Uh, thank you for being here as always. Thank you for answering our questions, both yeah, sure. real and silly. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Aaron. Um, uh, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Woo!